Today's question for best practice live epidural injection, how much does it actually cost? We're gonna unpack all of that today on Best Practice Live. Welcome to Best Practice Live. I'm Dr. Dan Lieberman. Today we're gonna unpack one of my favorite questions. It's a real chance for us to kind of dive in and get under the kimono of healthcare. And the question comes from Sergio. Let's take a look at what he asks. This was from the YouTube uh, Sergio three days ago. And dot, 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 what's the price of that epidural injection? Because getting one every two weeks just for curiosity. Well, that is a really interesting question as cost always is in healthcare because the answer becomes very quickly, cost to who and under what circumstances because it varies all over the place. In almost every part of the economy, if you get on a bus, there's only one fare. If you go to a restaurant, there's only one price for dinner. There, it doesn't depend on your situation. But healthcare isn't priced that way. It's a lot more complicated than that. The cost can be all over the place. Is Sergio costing, is, is he asking about, well, how much does it actually cost the facility to do one of those injections? That would be the cost of goods. Or is he asking, what does it really cost soup to nuts to get all that equipment and put all that together? What's the total cost of the entire process? Or is he more likely asking, what's it gonna cost me? Because I mean, you know, all of us are concerned in the end most about big number one, right? What's it gonna cost me to get one of these things? I would call that the out of pocket cost. In order to understand the last one, the out-of-pocket cost, we kind of have to back up a little bit and start at the beginning with the cost of goods. And before we can actually do that, we really need to ask ourselves, what is epidural injection and why would someone be getting one in the first place? Let's start with that on Best Practice Live. So what is an epidural injection. Epidural injection is the placement of a needle on the usually the outside of the spine by a pain management doctor and through the needle they're going to inject typically a little bit of steroid. In this picture this is a nerve root coming out of the spine. This is the spinal nerve root coming down Here's one below, but at this level, this one that has blue is where the medication is being delivered. And the medication is shown here as this little cloud. So this is an epidural injection. This needle is, uh, the thickness is about 25 gauge, and the length is typically three and a half inches. That's a typical spinal needle, which is used for epidural injection. Well, uh, who gets an epidural injection? Why would you even have one of those? Let's go back to the doctor-recommended treatment of low back pain and look at how epidural injection fits into the overall picture for this problem. So someone starts out with low back pain, and in this case, we're gonna end up with an epidural injection, so we know that that's not gonna be the knife in the back. It's not gonna be the ache off to one side. That's typically the pain that starts in the back but shoots down one leg or the other, like electricity, and may be associated with numbness, weakness, and on your doctor's examination, a lack of reflexes and strength. So whenever you have new pain, we wanna look at red flags. Is this, associate, is this new pain associated with severe weakness that's so bad you can't walk? Did you have an accident and now you're practically not functional? Is the numbness or weakness so bad that if you were left this way permanently, it would be handicapping to you? Do you have a history of cancer? Because there could be an underlying issue with that that really needs to be addressed. And for goodness sakes, is this associated with fever, shakes, or chills? 
because infection plus joint pain, whether it's the back, the knee, the anywhere, is an emergency that needs to be dealt with right away. So if none of these red flags are positive, and 99.9% .9 of the time they're all negative, if none of these red flags are positives, then you're okay to go on and treat at home. That's with rest, moist heat. Some people use a lumbar support orthosis. That's like a, an LSO brace, like you can get at Home Depot. And if they're safe for your body, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. How long do I treat at home? Three weeks. If you're not better in three weeks, you really no, need to go in to see a doctor. What kind of doctor is that? Well, either your primary care medical doctor or your primary care of the musculoskeletal system, chiropractic doctor. Either one is okay for this purpose. When you go in and see them at three weeks, your doctor is going to ask you questions. Frankly, they're gonna do a lot of those same red flag questions. They're going to examine you and then they're going to make a determination as to what happens next. And this is a split in the road. This is an inflection point where you and your doctor need together to be prepared to make a decision. If your pain is of a radicular kind, of a nerve root kind, mostly in the leg, feels like electricity, maybe associated with some numbness and weakness, your doctor may have found the absence of a reflex on physical examination. If your pain is of a radicular nature, then at this point, three weeks in, you need an X-ray and MRI scan. Why? Well, we're gonna see in a second because you're a good candidate for epidural injection. If it's not nerve root type pain, if your pain is the knife in the back, 100% in the middle of the back, worse with sitting, or if your pain is slightly off to one side, feels like it's coming from your back, but it's in your hip, comes down your butt, feels like it's burning on the outer part of your thigh, but not below the knee, well, those kinds of pain, you don't need an MRI. You need an X-ray followed by physical therapy. Now, we're talking about epidural injection today. So let us go on to assume that it was the nerve root type pain. People who watch this show all the time know that that is typically going to be caused by a herniated disc or a pinched nerve root as it leaves the spine called foraminal stenosis. One of those two things is probably the cause of the nerve root pain. You get the MRI if it does show the herniated disc, then by six weeks, you really should be seeing a pain management doctor and having an epidural injection. So this is where epidural injection fits into the big picture of what we're gonna do about the doctor recommended treatment for low back pain. All right, well, let's say that, that that's where we are and we go see the pain management doctor and we do have to have, uh, we, we are a good candidate for an epidural injection. When they do the injection, the doctor's gonna have three expenses. Number one, the disposable stuff that's required to do the injection. Number two, the facility costs. I mean, they don't do these injections out in a public park, right? They have to do it someplace, so there's some cost of the facility. Number three, there's the cost of the doctor. And actually, number four, there's the cost of the equipment that's required to do the injection. Let's take a look first at the disposables. What does the doctor have to get, and how much does that stuff cost in order to actually do the injection? Let's hit the screen and take a look. I think you're gonna be surprised. So, I mean, we saw the spinal needle. That's the three and a half inch spinal, that 22 gauge, that's $3.80. We also need to numb up the skin. That's a 25 gauge needle. That's a whopping four cents. We need an 18 gauge needle to draw the medicine, the steroid medicine out. And then we need some chloroprep to clean the skin. That's $3.34 just for the, well, essentially like an alcohol wipe. It's the wipe that goes on the skin because for, for the last thing we need is to introduce an infection into the body, right? You gotta put that medicine in something. So it goes in a 10 ml syringe, that's 15 cents. They're also gonna use numbing in a 5 ml syringe, that's 14 cents. And also 17 cents for a 1 ml syringe. That's where they're gonna probably actually draw up the steroid. The, um, what are the, well then there's the stuff they're gonna inject. They're gonna inject lidocaine, that's numbing medicine, short acting, usually lasts about 45 minutes. That's 92 cents. The Depo-Medrol, that's the steroid that's gonna go in. 
The steroid costs uh, $4.65. That steroid has a half-life, meaning in half of the people it will last 100 hours. So half the time a little more than 100 hours, half the time a little less. After that, there's no, no, no more pharmacological action of the medicine. It's, it's going to be metabolized by your body. When the needle is placed, the pain management doctor is going to follow it in under uh, fluoroscopy, x-ray guidance. Once they get it in place, they're going to inject a little bit of dye to make sure it's in the exact right place and to make sure that it's safe. And that dye is called OmniPAC 180, and that actually is the most expensive part of this whole package, $17.37. They're not just going to have your skin floating in the breeze. They're going to put ta sterile towels over it. So that's a buck eighty. So if you add up all of this stuff, all of this stuff costs $32.42. That's not too bad, right? Unfortunately, even though there's so many items here, we're going to see that this is actually... The, the disposable stuff that's going to be used is actually the least expensive part of this whole thing. So uh, what comes next? Well, um, what comes next is the doctor cost. And, you know, the amount of time the doctor is going to spend with you, the doctor has to earn a living, and pain management doctors are certainly uh, highly trained and highly compensated people. They make about $219, $218 an hour is one way to think about it. It would be the kind of the market rate for their services. If they're going to spend maybe 5, 10 minutes talking to you, another 5, 10 minutes doing the injection under the x-ray guidance, and then 5, 10 minutes checking on you after, you could think of the time the doctor spends with you is at most 30 minutes in the course of this, assuming there's no issues and everything goes well. Sometimes they could inject a little too much numbing and you need assessment after you've got some weakness or unexpected pain or, you know, so some are going to be a little more, some are going to be a little less, but let's say it's around 30 minutes. So that's 108 bucks in labor, right, and what it costs for the doctor to be there. And then there's the office, a typical medical office rents about $5,000 a month. The x-ray machine that is used to place the needle is about $100,000. You can get them for as much as 200 or uh, used for as little as 50, but it's probably around $100,000. And then when you have the injection, you're gonna be laying on a table and that table costs about $8,000. So, <laughs> I mean, there's all, so we've got the doctor cost of labor, the disposables, the 32 bucks, then there's the very expensive equipment and of course a place to do it. So it all adds up to a considerable amount of money. People often wonder, how come these epidurals are so expensive? And uh, the answer is, well, kind of a lot goes into it, right? There's a, there's a lot of costs here. Well, now let's transition from, that's the cost of goods, right? That's how much it costs them to, to put this whole thing on. But what's the cost to you? What's the price tag? After all, if you go to a dinner at a restaurant, They'll put the price on the menu, right? That's the, the price that they're going to charge you. Well, as I mentioned before, that varies a little bit in healthcare. That too can be tricky. First of all, it depends on whether you're paying out of pocket, whether you're paying cash, or whether you're paying with insurance. Now, the vast majority of people end up paying with some component of insurance. And um, the reason that affects how the ultimate price is to you is once we get insurance, then we've got two things. One is there's part of the doctor's contracting with the insurance is the doctor agrees to an allowable. An allowable is a fancy word for a price, but it's the price that the doctor and the insurance carrier agree upon. Now, Medicare is uh, the government, right? But it's actually, from a functional point of view, Medicare is another form of health insurance. And Medicare has its own allowables. Now, you can't, negotiate with, you can't negotiate with City Hall, right? They tell you what the allowable is. So the Medicare is a fee schedule. And they can't, there's so many, I mean, think about all the different operations and procedures that doctors do, right? There's no way they could just sort of 
th they need some kind of a system for encoding all this stuff to make sense of it and organize it, make sure it's accurate and done properly and safely. And that numerical system for encoding all the procedures that get done is called the Current Procedural Terminology, CPT. And every kind of thing a doctor does, whether it's seeing you in the office for a certain amount of time or uh, doing an epidural injection or taking out your appendix or doing brain surgery, whatever the doctor is doing, there's a CPT code that describes the procedure that they did. The, uh, these CPT codes vary. The CPT code for epidural injection, like I showed you with the needle in the back, is 644, 68848, excuse me, 68848. So five digits, they're all five digits. So it's that five digit code, 68848. The Medicare allowable, so the price tag that Medicare fee schedule has for doctors, if they do this in their office, so Sergio, if you're having your block in a pain management doctor's office and Medicare was the payer, then the price tag that Medicare puts on that procedure is $247.46. How'd they get to that? Who knows? <laughs> it's, it's the government, right? It's complicated. They have a whole process they go through and they get response from the public. And if, it's, they, if they set the price too low, the doctors will refuse to do it and then they have to raise it. So, and if it's too high, then they feel like they're getting ripped off and they adjust it. So it's really something that, that is a marketplace. It's dynamic. But Medicare, the allowable is $247.46. Of course, this is healthcare, so everything's more complicated. That's if the doctor did it in their office, where the doctor service and the office service are combined. Now, if the doctor did the block in a surgery center, then the ambulatory surgery center or the hospital is separate from the doctor's office. In that case, Medicare would pay the facility $416.71. Wait, you mean Medicare would pay the ambulatory surgery center more than they would pay the doctor in their office combined? Yeah, because the ambulatory surgery center is more expensive and they have to support the cost of that more extensive overhead with nurses and recovery and all the rest that may not be in the office. So there's a different fee for that. And guess what? There's actually a different fee if it's in a hospital outpatient center and yet another fee if it's actually in the hospital itself. So it's there's actually for this one thing, this 68848 epidural injection, there's an office code that includes the the doctor's fee. Then there's a facility code if it's in a surgery center. Then there's a hospital ambulatory center code. Then there's a hospital code. So there's actually four codes that describe the same thing done in different places. So really, really strange, but that's literally the way it works. By the way, if it gets done in that surgery center, well, the doctor is gonna get paid as well, right? They have to be there and do the operation, do the procedure. How much does the doctor get paid? Well, Medicare sets that at $109.89. $109.89, okay, it is what it is. Most commercial payers, uh, what in, in the healthcare industry are often called BUCA, Blue Cross, United, Cigna, Aetna, HealthNet, and Humana, BUCA, they're the big six insurance carriers. Most of the BUCAs are gonna form contracts with providers based on some percentage of Medicare. Medicare is generally the lowest payer because they have, they get in a volume discount, they have the most people. Um, then the, uh, oh, hey, we got a question. Is getting an epidural injection worth it? Well, that's a great question. Hang on a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna address that in just a second. Well, so uh, the BUCAs are gonna have some, per let me finish that thought. The BUCAs are gonna have some percentage of, um, of uh, Medicare fee schedule, and that's gonna be their fee schedule. Some of the carriers, like Blue Cross actually, sometimes has their own fee schedule, where they literally go through these thousands of codes and apply their own. Is it worth it? That's a great question too, because that would depend on one, how much did you actually have to pay? I'm gonna give you an example down below of somebody who's on Medicare and let's look at their out-of-pocket cost. And then the flip side of that is how severe is the benefit? If someone had a small disc 
and they were getting, eh, you know, it was uncomfortable, but they were functional. No, right? It, there's, it's probably not worth hardly anything. On the other hand, if someone is just miserable and you're, you're, you're gasping, trying to catch your breath with pain, and this thing is shooting down your leg, like people will tell me they're being poked with a red hot poker and it's zipping down their leg, like they're being electrocuted and they're, they're pale and they're sweating and they're miserable. Yeah, is 100 hours relief from that worth some cash? You, it is for me. It is for almost anybody. So it depends on your situation. Is it worth it? Probably. And another way to look at that is uh, how many people decide to do this. And the answer is hundreds of thousands to millions. The epidural injection for uh, low back radicular nerve root type pain is extremely common. Hundreds of thousands of procedures are done every year. And then epidural injection, of course, is also done for childbirth, right? It's a great form of anesthesia if you're having a baby and, um, and other procedures that might be, done, uh, not, might be done in the low back or, the, or even in the legs. So it could be worth it. Um, I think it usually is. Now, is it permanent? That question about is it worth it is, well, then the other question is, okay, I'm gonna get relief, but how long is that relief gonna last? And the answer to that is, always not as long as you wish, right? The drug only lasts for 100 hours. So you have to weigh whether that temporary relief is gonna be worth the amount of money that it's gonna cost you. And in just a minute, I'm gonna take you through an example to show you how to calculate that for yourself, how much it's gonna cost you out of pocket. But that's a really important thing to consider, is that this is not a permanent relief, it's a temporary relief. And that's why, quite frankly, very often epidural injections are done as a series of three. Why is it done as a series of three? It starts to be too much steroid on your body. You, you can't do six of these. It's just too much steroid drug. The complications of the steroid start to become too high a risk that most doctors are just not willing to take it. The other happy reality is that if it lasts 100 hours, that's about five days, right? And if it took a day or two to get in and a day or two to wear off, then it almost lasts the better part of two weeks. 84% of people are gonna get better within six weeks. So if you could cover them with three epidurals two weeks apart, you're gonna get the vast majority of people through the painful period while they heal on their own. So that's definitely something to consider as is it worth it? It's, it's a form of temporary palliative pain control. It's not gonna make you better, it's not gonna change whether or not you need surgery, it's not gonna ultimately alter it, but holy cow, when you're taking away that pain, that can be definitely be worth it for some people. And we'll show you how to calculate the other side of that here in just a second. All right, well, how do you calculate that? Let's go back to the screen and I wanna take you through some insurance basics and talk about some numbers. So on the very top, I've got the price for an epidural injection, and I'm gonna assume that you're on a Medicare plan, so the price that the Medicare allowable under the Medicare fee schedule is $247.46. All right, well, to figure out your out-of-pocket cost, we need to know your deductible. The Medicare, this is, you know, there's three parts to Medicare, A, B, and C. A is the hospital, B is the doctor, outpatient stuff, C is drugs and pharmacy. So this is B, assume in, in our example where you're having, Sergio's having the block done in his pain management doctor's office. So we're part B. The Medicare policy deductible for part B is $233. How much of the deductible has Sergio already met? I have no idea. I made up 150 bucks. Now this is all the money you've paid out of pocket so far this year for qualified expenses under your plan. Let's say you, you thought, hey, the, the best medicine for me are gumdrops, and I've spent $100 on gumdrops. Not gonna count, right? And gumdrops are not a covered healthcare expense under Medicare or, sadly, any other healthcare plan. But um, glasses sometimes are. So if you spend 100 bucks on glasses, that might be. Uh, dental work sometimes is. If you had a COVID vaccination and you paid for it yourself, and you know, the government usually pays for those. Let's say it was a flu shot and you paid for it. Yeah, that would be covered. That would contribute toward your deductible. Let's say this person met $150 of their deductible. And again, I'm just making that up. 
Then the out-of-pocket, another thing I need to know is what's called the out-of-pocket maximum. That's a lot of words, but it's a very simple concept. The out-of-pocket maximum is the maximum amount the policy expects you to come out of your own pocket per year. And this is a really important number, which people often overlook when they're looking at their own insurance. Because at the end of the day, you get insurance because if lightning strikes and a disaster happens, you don't want to be wiped out, right? So that out-of-pocket maximum is critically important because it's really the same thing. It's the most you could end up spending. Well, for Part B Medicare, the out-of-pocket maximum is unlimited. Most commercial health insurance, though, does put a number on that. Um, we got another question, and that is, I have two bulging discs. Should I have epidural injection? I'd love to go into that. Um, we'll, we'll cover that more in just a second. Um, whoops. Lost my, lost my image here. Let me go back to it. Um, whoops. Let's see if we can find this. There we go. Okay, um, out-of-pocket max already met. In this case, it's the same as the deductible. That's $150. Then there's the coinsurance. I swear this is the last thing I'm going to try to, I'm going to have to explain to you. You'll be great, grateful to know. But coinsurance is the over the deductible and under the out-of-pocket max, how much is the insurance going to cover? And a lot of plans are 80-20, that, and Medicare happens to be 80-20. That means the, once you're above the deductible but under the out-of-pocket max, me, the insurance is going to cover 80% of the expense. You're expected to cover 20% of the expense. So that is, uh, there are 90-10 plans. Um, there are, um, there's 75-25, there could 70-30, there could be anything. It's just a number that's agreed to and is part of your policy. But that coinsurance is a really important number for you to know. I've even seen 50-50 plans where you're expected to cover half up to the out-of-pocket max above the deductible, and the insurance company covers the other half. All right, so if we add it all up, in this example, we've got $83 remaining on the deductible, so that's going to cost them $83, bucks, plus the 20%, because Medicare is $80-20, of the remaining $164. So Medicare is going to cover 80% of the 164, but our in our example, this person's going to have to cover 20%, which is around 30 bucks, and that means their out-of-pocket their out-of-pocket cost for the epidural injection is $115.89. That's how you figure it out. And look, I know this is really ridiculously mathy for a lot of us. So I actually built this calculator into my website. If you go to phoenixspineandjoint.com under our, uh, in our resource center, and we have, uh, I'm sorry, under our insurance menu, find your insurance and you can put in the procedure that you need and look at what your out-of-pocket cost would be. If you wanna do this for your own, you can do it by uh, getting a combination of two things. First, your phone, and second, your insurance card. Some of this information is actually on the insurance card, and what isn't on the insurance card, if you call the number on the card, they'll tell you over the phone. So you can set up one of these little grids based on what you see in this and come up with your out-of-pocket expense. It's a, it, I mean, honestly, it's a lot to ask of anybody, and we are also here to help you with that. If you click through on the link and go to phoenixspineandjoint.com under our uh, resource page for best practice. There's a contact us box. Fill out that box and we'll be happy to get a hold of you and walk you through this. My staff are trained to help people with these kind of calculations because, I mean, you know, honestly and frankly, it's just kind of a lot. It's just a lot to do on your own. All right, that last question was, uh, I have a bulging disc. Should I get an epidural injection? And the answer to that is definitely maybe. Bulging discs, remember a bulging disc is a situation where the annulus has weakened, but it didn't rip open. And so the inner part of the disc, the nucleus, is bulging out. So the real inflammation that goes on the nerve root is usually from an extruded fragment of the nucleus, putting pressure and 
causing inflammation on the nerve root. Bulging discs usually don't do that. If the hole that the nerve root goes through is too narrow and the disc is bulging, the combination can sometimes make it so that the nerve root is actually irritated by a bulging disc. But that's usually not the case. So I personally would say if you have a bulging disc and someone has recommended an epidural injection, I'd call time out on that and get together with me. Let's go over your case and see if that really makes sense because typically that would not be a reason to have an epidural injection. Extruded disc fragment on a nerve root that's killing you but you don't have functional numbness or weakness and you think you can get better on your own, oh heck yeah, all day, every day. Then you can look at your out-of-pocket cost and decide whether or not that actually makes sense for you. But bulging disc, usually not, usually not. All right, well, um, wasn't this kind of horrifying? <laughs> I mean, it's so, uh, there's so much that goes on with cost. A recent Gallup poll found that almost 80% of Americans are so worried about the cost of healthcare that they would change their party to vote for somebody who had a good plan. And you know how entrenched people are in their parties these days. I mean, healthcare expenses are a really legitimate issue. A lot of people, and uh, breaks my heart, but especially the elderly, a lot of our grandparents are not getting care because of the cost. And, you know, as a father myself of young adults, I see it on the other end too. A lot of young adults are not getting the care that they need because of the cost. And that's just unacceptable. In a country like ours, that's just crazy and unacceptable. But anyway, we've all got to deal with the hand we're dealt, right? And you can radically reduce your health care expenses. Whatever resources you do have for healthcare, you're really responsible for spending them as correctly and judiciously as you can. And you cannot do that just by showing up and writing a check for your deductible and your out-of-pocket max. That just doesn't work anymore. In order to be a responsible consumer of healthcare, you really have to understand the pricing mechanism. You really have to understand what services you actually need and you really have to be the quarterback of your own care. Well, how can you possibly do that? Where do you get all that information? Right here on Best Practice Live. That's what we do. Search on the site, search on YouTube, and let us walk you through your options so that you walk into that doctor's office knowing what you need. You walk in there with the mental preparation to understand what questions you need to ask ahead of time to find out how much it's gonna cost and you know what you're trying to get and how you can afford it. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for being with us. Do you have a question for me? Send it in. I'd love to see it. Click through to the website, uh, submit your questions. We answer every single one. Confused? We can help. We're here to help. Click through. We'll show you what's going on. And last, got a doctor but you're not sure? Like, like we talked about yesterday with uh, Miss Jenner and her uh, knee replacement surgeon. Got a doctor, but you're not really sure what their rating is? Send in, your comp send in your question. We'll rate them for you, help you find and get the health care you deserve. For Best Practice Live, I'm Dr. Dan Lieberman. If you have a question you would like answered on Best Practice Live, there are three ways to ask. Leave a comment on any of our social channels. Click the link to our website and complete the submission form or call us at 602-256-2525. The more information you can give us, the better we can answer your question. So please contact us and we can walk you through uploading your imaging to a secure server. Please like and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with information about your spine and joint health. Lastly, be sure to check out new episodes every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, where we answer all your questions.